Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we start rigging our characters. But before we get into rigging our character, I'd like to touch on the very, very basic principles of what rigging even is. So essentially, rigging is taking our mesh, our, our geometry, and parenting it to a skeleton that rests inside of our geometry. So for this example, I've built a skeleton which consists of three joints. And the way this works is all of these exist in a hierarchy. And when I move joints that are at the top of the hierarchy, it also affects all the joints below it. I can't see my joints from inside the mesh by default, but if I go up here, two buttons away from my regular X-ray button is X-ray joints. And that way I can see the joints through everything. I've also created a series of something called NURBS circles. And we haven't really gone into NURBS at all yet. NURBS is an acronym. It stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines. And without going super into it, basically it's like the pen tool in Photoshop. It is a, is a mathematical spline in a 3D space. You can do a lot of different things with NURBS. They have a lot of different applications. Sometimes you can model with them. Sometimes you can use NURBS to create polygons in certain interesting ways. And when it comes to animation and rigging, we use NURBS curves as handles for our joints. When used in this way, we refer to these curves as controllers. And so when an animator is working with a rig, they animate by moving the controllers around rather than the joints themselves because they're a lot easier to grab than trying to select the, the joints. And there's a lot of benefits to using a proxy rather than animating the skeleton itself. So if I were to be rigging this by hand with no plugins, I've already set up my skeleton. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to select my skeleton, then select my mesh. And then in my rigging shelf, I'm going to select bind skin. And now you can see the joints have changed color. And if I move them, my geometry moves with it because it's now been skinned to that joint. And then if I wanted to set up these controllers to control the joints, I would select a controller, select the joint, and then making sure that my menu setup here is set to rigging. I'll go to constrain and make a parent constraint. So what's that done? So what that's done is it has constrained the joint to the nerve circle. And now when I move that nerve circle, my my joint moves with it. And I can do the same with the other joints. And finally, what I want to do is I want to recreate this hierarchy of the joints in my controllers. So I'm going to minimal mouse drag these, con these controllers inside of each other. And now I've got a functional rig of a noodle. So this is just the absolute basic principles of rigging, but you can see how scaled up to an entire character. This could take a very, very long time and could be very tedious. So we're not going to be rigging this way today. We are going to be using a plugin called Advanced Skeleton. It's not really helpful for me to guide you through rigging a character like this from scratch, not only because it's it's exhausting and would take forever, but also it's not the standard in the industry either. In the industry, you don't really see people making rigs from scratch like this. Generally, they'll have assistance from some sort of plugin, be it advanced skeleton or something in-house or something of the sort. One more thing we need to talk about before we can start rigging is the concept of references. 
And I'm not talking about reference photos or anything like that. I'm talking about references in Maya as a technical term. So basically, references are a way to import files into your scene from other Maya files in a way that allows you to go back to the original Maya file, make changes, and then import those changes into the new file. So to show that off, I've opened a second window of Maya, and I've got a blank scene here. I've saved my little noodle rig here as its own scene. And now I want to bring this noodle rig into my new scene over here. But I don't want to just import it because if I import my noodle rig here and put it into this scene, let's see, let's just go ahead and do that. I now have the noodle rig in my new scene. If I need to make changes to my original noodle rig, there's no way for me to get those into this scene without deleting the imported object and re-importing it, losing whatever animation or work I might have done with that object in the new scene. So instead, what I want to do in this context is I want to make a reference to my noodle rig. So starting out fresh, I'm going to go to File and go down to Create Reference. And just like importing, I'm going to find my noodle rig and hit Reference. And oh, I've made a little mistake here. I forgot to save my original changes. So it looks a little bit different in the new scene versus the current noodle rig scene. But that's okay, because all I have to do is go up to here and save my noodle rig changes. And then in my new scene, I'm going to go to File and Reference Editor. I'm going to right click my noodle rig in the Reference Editor. And go to Reference, Reload Reference. And now the changes that I saved in my noodle rig are applied in my new scene. So this is really important for our rigging process, because we don't want to be working on an imported version of our character model, nor do we want to be working on the original version of our character model. We want to be working on a referenced character model. This is very, very important because as we're rigging, we may find that we need to make a change to the model and we need to bring that change back in. And if we are not referencing our model, that may mean we need to scrap all of the work we did on the rig because we would need to import a new model. Now, if you do make changes to the model, you still might need to make a lot of back steps and go pretty far back in your pipeline, but it is far less destructive to your model and to your rig to work with a referenced character model. So whatever you do, just remember to make a reference to your character and work off of the reference rather than working off of the original file or an import. So to start working with Advanced Skeleton, first we need to download it. Advanced Skeleton can be downloaded from animationstudios.com.au. I will include a link to it in the description. And once you're on the site, you can go down to download. And then grab the latest version right up here at the top. So once you've got your plugin downloaded, you'll need to find a folder to keep Advanced Skeleton in. Uh, the plugin itself recommends C slash users, your name, documents, Maya, scripts. This is a fine place to keep it, but the plugin itself admits you can keep Advanced Skeleton anywhere. But I'm going to go ahead and place it where it recommends. I'm going to extract all. And I'm going to extract the contents to this same folder. And I'll go ahead and delete the zip folder because we don't need it anymore. Then once you've got that folder, go ahead and open your Maya. So once you've got that folder installed, go ahead and go back into Maya. And you can either create a new shelf for Advanced Skeleton, or you can use one of the existing shelves. Either animation or rigging works well. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new shelf. Call it... Advanced Skeleton. And then in that new folder you just downloaded, there should be an install.mel file. Simply drag that into Maya with your preferred shelf opened. And just like that, Advanced Skeleton is installed. And we can open it by clicking this big five. 
and it'll dock itself to the left, like so. Now with Advanced Skeleton installed, I'm going to go to File and open my character scene. It appears a little dark right now. I'm going to turn up my exposure just so I can see. In Advanced Skeleton, I'm going to open up the Preparation tab. So before we really get started, we want to use this tab to make sure our character is fully prepared to start rigging. So one of the things we can do is we can check our model's symmetry using model check. And what's really nice about Advanced Skeleton is that every function has this little question mark tab next to it, which we can click and it'll create a pop-up, which will tell us exactly what each thing does. So this checks the model to see if it is symmetrical and checks if there are any translate, rotate, or scale values applied. So I'm going to close that out. I'm going to select my body model and I do a model check. And it opens this window and hit check. And it scans through my entire model and it checks to make sure all of my vertices are symmetrical. And it looks like it is. So it gave me the okay down here say model is symmetrical now just to show what happens when a model isn't symmetrical i'm going to select my belt which i know is asymmetrical i'm going to hit check again and so this pops up and what this is telling me first of all is that my pivot is not in the right place so when we are working with advanced skeleton it expects our pivot which is our handle right here to be at the exact center of our grid right here. So if we were to fix this, we ourselves, we could hit D and then I can start moving my pivot independently of my belt. So I'm going to grab it from the center, move it around a bit, and then I'm gonna come down to the center of my grid. I'm gonna hold X to temporarily turn on my snap to grid. I'm going to just click with the middle mouse to snap it to that position and I'm press D to confirm my pivot. And now that pivot is right at the center of my grid. I'm going to do another check on the belt. And great. So now the pivot is symmetrical, but the vertices are not symmetrical. So what it's going to do, I'm going to hit continue anyway. It's going to show me all these different vertices that are not symmetrical. And actually, it's it's missing some because this thing is so sim asymmetrical that it really doesn't know what to do with it. But say if that was on my body and there was just one little spot, it would point it out. And that would be my opportunity to clean up any remaining asymmetry of my mesh. Now, that process of going through and moving the pivot manually was a bit intensive. Uh, luckily, one of the other steps we can take in our preparations will do all of that for us. That is the model clean button. And what model clean does is it's basically going to take our model, export everything as OBJs, and then re-export everything back in to basically clear the model of any weird errors that might be attached. And it will clear the history of, the, of all our models. And it will move all of the pivots right to that center point. So what it wants us to do before we actually move on with that is it wants us to place all of our geometry into a single group called geo. So I'm going to go ahead and for my outliner, select one, shift select down to the bottom, and hit control G to group it all. And I'm going to rename it to geo, all lowercase. And I'll hit model clean and hit clean. And now it's gone through, it's turned off my texture view and, and reset some of my viewport settings, which I'll reset. But now everything has the same pivot at the center of my grid. I'll even go through, do model checks on everything just to be sure. Everything is, is symmetrical except for that belt. 
If anything is intentionally asymmetrical, that should be fine, but it will be more work for you later on down the road. You'll have to fix some things manually and do twice as much work in those areas, but it is doable. Great, and now that we have cleaned up our entire model, I'm gonna go ahead and go to File, Save Scene As, and sometimes it's nice to just give yourself a name for particular increments. So I'm gonna give this the name character demo underscore. No, I'm gonna put it after the number. So I'm gonna put it dot model model underscore clean. Sometimes it's good to just have a, a name somewhere in your specific increments for important steps. Just so when you look back later, you can find them again. All right. Next, I'm going to go over to the rig tab here under preparation. And I'm going to hit new scene. And that just gives us a brand new scene without our character in it. And as we talked about before, we're going to reference our character now. If you don't see your file right away, go ahead and check the files drop down to find your file type. I'm going to grab my clean model and it comes in like so. Now it might come in as this weird wireframe. You when you get a gray wireframe like this that you can't select, that means it is templated in your layers. So to turn off template, simply go over here and click the T and it'll convert it to reference mode, which you still can't select, but you can see it again. One of the other really nice things about Advanced Skeleton is that everything is laid out in the pretty much the exact order you're supposed to do things in. So it's really easy to follow along and it, it takes some of the ambiguity out of the whole rigging process. So after I've referenced it in my model, it wants me to define the following objects. What is my skin object? What are all the objects? What is the right eye and the left eye? So that's really easy to take care of. I'm gonna select my skin, press the skin button. Everything, so that's all. Find your right eye, and your left eye. And we're moving to, ready to move on to the body, which, oh boy, there are a lot of tabs here. Don't worry, we're not gonna use all of these. A lot of these are just different ways to do what is essentially the same thing. So for now, we're just going to start at fit. So when you open up fit, the first thing you'll be asked to do is select a preset. Now this is really cool because right, there, there's a couple different bipeds. There's a bird rig, a bug, a cat. There's all the different base rigs that we could create depending on the character that we're making. We're just gonna stick with the simple biped. And then once you've chosen which preset you want, go ahead and hit import. And it'll drop that rig right in. Now it does come in very small, but that's okay. We can fix this in a minute. If your character is not facing in the direction of this rig, I highly recommend you go back to your regular character file and rotate them in this direction and freeze your transformation because you want your character to be facing forward with the blue Z axis pointing forward then once you've imported your skeleton, you have the option to add extra limbs. You could add a tail, for example, and it'll pop it in right there. But I'm going to delete that because I don't want a tail. Next, I'm going to hit scale, and it is going to shoot the scale of this thing up way, try and roughly match the size of my character. Turn my extra joints. And already it's done a pretty decent job. So after I've hit scale, I'm going to then hit auto place. And auto place is going to basically scan my whole model and try to guesstimate where the best place to put these joints are in a sort of first pass for this rig. And it's moved up my right arm temporarily, but as soon as I hit delete guides, it's going to move it back into the normal place. Like so. So with hardly any work at all, it's already gotten us a pretty 
close match to what we're looking for. So now with our joints approximated, it's a good idea to go through and check everything to make sure it's exactly how we want it. We are going to be going back and forth with the placement of these joints as we sort of test out their weights and their placement. So don't feel too precious about getting it right on the very first time. However, once you get to a certain point where you're weight painting manually, uh, then you're going to start losing progress if you start moving things around. So it's a good idea to go back and forth at this phase rather than rushing right on ahead with the first thing you get and then we're getting it later once you've done a bunch of weight painting and you need to change something. So for starters, I feel like this chest may be too low. I feel like I want at least a little bit higher. So I'm going to select it, press W, and I'm going to make sure I am moving in object space. So to do that, I'm going to hold W and left click. And sure enough, I am moving in object space. If I were to move in world space, it would work move in the strict world XYZ directions. But in object space, it works in relation to the orientation of that object. You can see because all of these joints are parented to this chest joint, they all move along with it, which is not quite what I want. Instead, what I want to do is I want to press D. And by pressing D, I can move just the chest joint without affecting anything else. And then I want to do the same with this middle spine joint. Just get it kind of right in the middle. Great. I think I'm happy with this clavicle and the shoulder. But this elbow, I think I want to move up further. I want it to be closer to this point in my elbow. So press D, move this up that way. There we go. And it's good to double check your rotation. So that's good. That's moving the direction I want it to. When you're moving around these joints, your general goal is to aim for right in the middle of your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, wherever your joint is. That's the general goal is to be right in the middle. Sometimes you might find that you will want to have something slightly off depending on where the joint is and what kind of rotation you're looking for. For example, I could see that it looks like this elbow is a little further towards the outside versus the inside, but I think I'm actually going to say that that's okay. Basically, what it'll mean that'll mean is there will be more compression on this side of the elbow versus this side, but I think I can mitigate that with... Uh, my weight painting and maybe some blend shapes later on. I think it'll be easier to fix if there's more on this side rather than this side by just a little bit, but I can't really be sure. And it might be something I, I regret later. So these are all things that you sort of just kind of have to think about as you are moving along. Another area to think about is your spine. Because technically the spine on a on a person is, you know, it's along the back. So, so that's kind of where you would expect the rotation to be. But you might find that it works better to actually have your rotations more towards the center. I'm going to make a little adjustment to the chest and move it a little bit more towards the back. Same with this. But that might be something that you experiment with, having your spine more in the middle of your character or towards the actual physical back of your character. Moving down to the hands. 
I think I want this knuckle to be moved over just a little bit. And press D. Want it really kind of right in there. Same with this one. Moving over to my thumb. The thumb it didn't do a great job on. But I don't blame it. Thumbs are very tricky. So move this one back. Move this back. Forward a little bit. Curl this in just a little bit. Just trying to find each of those joints in my thumb. Let's see, joint there, joint there. It's a little less obvious where the joints would be in the thumb. So check your own hand, your real life hand as reference. Try and kind of see how your thumb articulates to see where you would want to put these joints. Moving up to the face, there are a couple of, there, there's an error here. Uh, this jaw I would like to have on the very end. If you're doing a face rig, uh, this job will get replaced later on, but I want to get it right the first time. So, I'm hit D. I'm going to turn my snap to vertices. I want the jaw to snap to the very tip. Right there should be good. Next, I want to double check my eye and make sure that this is in the exact center. So I'm going to isolate, select my eye in this bone. And I'm gonna make sure to look at it from the side view. I want the pivot of this eye to be exactly in the middle of this line here. And it's close, but it's not quite there. Let me turn my wireframe. The joint is just a little bit off, so I'm going to hit, hit W, hit D, and then with snap to point selected, I'm going to move it back so it's right on that vertice, on the x-axis, of course, just the x-axis, and go back to perspective mode, and that's right where I want it to be on the middle of that eyeball. As for this top of the head joint, I want to reach the top of the hair as well. So I'm going to go to my side view, unisolate select, hit D. And snap it right to that top vertice. As for my neck, I think I want that. I want that more towards the base of the neck, and I think it's perceived the collar as being the base. So I'm gonna move that down further. And then I want this bone to move through the neck more straight on. So I'm going to actually adjust these. like so. So it's leaning forward just a little bit like the actual neck is. In fact, I'm going to isolate select these, grab this joint, turn on, snap to points, move this over my base of the head joint. Turn off isolate select, 
and we're back. And that's looking pretty good for the head. I think I'm okay with the hip there, but I might decide later that I need to move the hip closer in. But I think I'm okay with it right now. The knee is what I'm most concerned about right now, as it's certainly a bit lower than I envisioned the knee to be. So I'm going to hit D. Move this up. It's kind of right in the center of where I envision the knee to be. And then with the feet, you really want all of these joints to be on the very edges of the surface of where this touches. So I'm going to turn on snap to points. I'm just going to drag these out as far as I can get them. Where it's touching the ground. Mostly it was that pinky toe wasn't far out enough. There we go. Great. And I think that worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with this. So we can move on to the next step. To add a custom limb of sorts. You can do so over here in edit. And you can just add joints right here. So you can click that, go to the joint tool, and go to one of your orthographic views. I'm going to pick the side. And I'm just going to add a, uh, a couple joints to our ears so that it has a little more manual control. So I'm going to click three spots. And it's made a joint chain. And I want it to actually be on the other side, so I'm going to flip it over here. Turn off my snap to points. Rotate this. Just put it inside the ear. And now that I've placed those joints, all I have to do is select the bottom of this chain of joints. And then I hold shift and select the base of the head or wherever I want it to be attached to and hit P for parent. And you can see a connection has been made between those two joints. And if I rotate, if I move this head around, it goes along with it. It's a good idea to name these joints so it doesn't get confusing. So I'm going to have this selected and pre press F to find it in my outliner. You can see I've got joint one, joint two, joint three. I'm just going to rename these. Ear one. Ear two. Ear three. When you're rigging, you're going to want to save these under a file name that's pretty obvious that it is for rigging. So for my character here, I've named this character rigging dot tf dot number. So it's clear when I'm looking at these files that this is for rigging and not for modeling. Be sure to save often when you're rigging, especially because Advanced Skeleton doesn't necessarily like you using the undo key for everything. It can start causing problems if you start doing Control Z. So not that you can't ever use it, but just be prepared that sometimes it will glitch out and do something unexpected. So, so far we've been working on sort of a proxy rig called the Fit Skeleton. And so that's why the rig only has one side. It is just to put our joints in place for when we build the real skeleton, known as the advanced skeleton, hence the name of the plugin. So with our fit skeleton all set up, we're ready to move on to the next tab, the build tab. And right now there is just a single option, build advanced skeleton. What it's going to do, it's going to build out our entire rig based on the placement of our joints on the fit skeleton. Now, it hasn't skinned anything. Everything is still 
free floating. But this is what our actual rig will look like. Now, right away, I've noticed there's a problem. And it's that these feet have come in at a slight angle. I can see that the auto placement of these joints has added a, a sort of angle to these feet. And that will be very, very difficult to animate with later on. So I need to go in and fix these right away. So luckily, this whole building of the advanced skeleton isn't permanent. I can go back to my fit skeleton by pressing toggle fit slash advance. Just like that, I am back to my joint editing mode. And from there, I'm going to grab this foot. I'm going to isolate the selection. And with toes selected, I'm going to turn on snap to point, and press W, D, and I'm going to snap it right to that ankle joint. And the same thing with the heel. Or on the toe end. And for the pinky toe, I'm going to snap that on the Z axis, the big toe, just to make sure. My toe end, my toes, my foot, my heel are all aligned with each other on this axis. And the big toe, toes, and pinky toe are all aligned with each other on this axis. And I'm going to hit delete advance, delete my advanced skeleton. And I'm going to hit advanced skeleton again. It's going to rebuild the whole thing. And there we go. My feet controllers are perfectly straight. So by default, all of the bones in this rig are mirrored. So the arms, the legs, there's two of everything. Even the ears, which I created myself, were automatically mirrored. But let's say theoretically my character only had one ear and I didn't want to mirror this over. This would be an instance where you want to apply an attribute. So attributes, you may have seen them in the edit tab right here. And there's all sorts of attributes we can add. And each of these attributes is explained if you press the question mark. And it's a very, very, very long pop up that explains what each of these does. They're all very useful and some of them are pretty advanced stuff that you might necessarily need but one of them is no mirror which will prevent anything we apply this attribute to from being mirrored so i'm going to toggle off my advanced skeleton i'm going to go in and i'm going to select my ear and then in attribute i'm going to go down select no mirror i'm going to add so now that is on my base ear joint, and you can even see it has been added to the channel box on the right. And then I'm going to go down here and hit Rebuild Advanced Skeleton. Just like that, and now I only have the one ear joint. But I do have two ears, so I'm going to go back. And with that same joint selected, I'm going to hit Remove on that attribute. Rebuild Advanced Skeleton and bring back that other ear. So we're pretty close to being able to skin this, but just be sure it's good to just kind of go through this whole model and really test everything out. Or it's good to go through this whole rig and test everything out just to make sure things are kind of working as you might expect them to. So you can select this hand controller and select all these curls. Make sure the fingers are curling all right. Check the wrist. It's rotating the right direction. Check your IK and FK. You can turn on IK or FK on certain parts of your rig by selecting these blue plus signs. And it's going up to here. It's turning up the FK IK blend. And now you've got your IK handle. That's moving all right. 
His elbow pole position is good too. Just go through and check all these sort of things. If one of your controllers is hidden inside of your model, you can adjust the size of this by selecting the controller and holding right click and going to control vertice. And you can see that this nerves curve has vertices just like polygons. And what you can do is you can select a couple of them and you can Scale them out. You can even turn on, press B to turn on soft select. You can scale them out this way. And then just go to object mode and you're done. So I've got another one here for the neck. I'm gonna select all those vertices. Turn off my 3D. Scale them up. Now, something about this tells me I've maybe put my neck too far down if the controller is wanting to be on the inside of the character. So I'm actually gonna going to not scale this so much. And go back, toggle my advanced skeleton. I'm just going to move this up a bit. No, it's still at the base of the neck. It's more in line with that shoulder rather than on the inside. Okay. I'm gonna rebuild advanced skeleton. We'll take another look. There we go. Now that neck controller is a bit more visible. Go a step further. Grab a couple of these vertices just to finish off visibility and raise this up. Just get kind of a different shape going. And there we go. So we've got our fit skeleton, and now we want to apply the geometry as a skin to this rig. So to do that, Advanced Skeleton has plenty of options. Uh, it's actually very, very nice how many different ways you can actually skin your mesh. It would take a really, really long time to go through all of them, and I haven't really done all of these. I've found that the one that I prefer is option two, which is to create something called a skin cage. So what skin cage does is you hit create and it goes through every joint. And from your rig, it creates sort of a boxy mock-up of a model character, which is skinned to your skeleton. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the size of all these boxes so that nothing is overlapping, but it all matches up pretty well with our geometry, our character model. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the skin weights from the crude box model over to our character mesh. So I'm going to go through and adjust the size of this skin cage. Now might be a good time to set my character model to template mode again. And then with these green controllers selected, I'm just going to start scaling these different parts of the skin cage. I'm okay with those. You want the skin cage to roughly match up with the character, but what's most important is you don't want anything overlapping. For the most part, everything's looking okay. If I am concerned about
this shoulder area, but shoulders are always tricky, so that's not surprising. No matter what we do, we're going to have to do a lot of custom work on these armpits. That's just how it is. Scale up the neck a bit. And you'll see there are two layers for these curves that we are adjusting to modify the size of these boxes. When you're working on one side, you can mirror it over to the other. So I adjusted this arm and I want to move it over to the left arm. So I'm going to hit right to left. Make sure you are mirroring over. You don't want to have inconsistencies with this. And you'll notice in your layers tab, there are layers for these green curves, which with which we are adjusting the size of the skin cage. And then there's also a layer full of red curves, which would apply an additional level of customization. After we've made some adjustments, we want to hit deformation width. Just to bring those in closer to our joints. So you can see before we do that, look at how this does not deform right at all. It gets really thin on both sides of these. But then we hit deformation width and it tightens up the weights. So when I raise this leg, that compresses a lot more naturally and to become as thin. So once you're done adjusting all your green boxes, hit deformation width. There's a little bit extra work we need to do in the hips area in particular to get the angle of those legs working right. Then I'm gonna hit create groin locators. And I'm gonna find this groin start locator. I'm going to zoom in, drag that down, I'm going to turn my snap to points, snap that to the lowest point of my groin, and there's a groin side right here, I'm going to snap that to the furthest point over here. I'm going to hit adjust groin area. And deformation width. And so that's added an angle to my legs where they connect at the hips that should feel a lot more natural. There is still sort of a loss of volume on our cage as we rotate this elbow. We can further mitigate this by adding slider joints. And so all we need to do to add slider joints is select our green curve and go over here and hit create. It adds two joints to the inside and outside of this elbow. I'm gonna do the same for these red controls as well. And what that does is it simulates the moving of flesh around the elbow as it slides. It more accurately preserves the volume of that joint as we move around. We can turn off the joints and we can see it a little more effective here. Now, if you don't like this, you can always go in and just how strong the effect is for each of these joints. So say I want, I still want like a little bit of a crease here and select the joint and in the channel box, I can select slide and can turn that value and can turn that value down. 
slide it down. So I'm going to select slide in the channel box and I'm going to press middle mouse in my viewport to slowly adjust that value. You can see how I can tweak the effect. I'll leave it on one for now. Now I've been moving around my rig just now, but I want to get it back to my default pose or my build pose. So to do that, all I need to do is go to my advanced skeleton window. At the very bottom is go to bind pose. And it snaps right back into the default position. And then finally, after adding those extra joints, I just want to make sure to mirror them over to the side. So I'm going to hit right, left. And now I've got slider joints on both sides. And I will repeat the same operation down here for the knees. If I feel it's necessary, I could always do this again after I've bound my skin. Okay, so I, I've I've adjusted my skin cage. I've added these slider joints. It's looking pretty good. Now I want to go ahead and bind my skin cage weights to my actual character. So to copy the weights from our skin cage to our character, all I need to do is select all the geometry of my character. And then over here, I'm going to select copy weights. Then it'll take a second to process. Then I can hide my skin cage. And now the rig has been skinned. So as you move along, you may find that some of your rotations are not quite right. Uh, one in particular problem area may be the thumb. You may discover that it looks all right and you can manually, you know, rotate it all right. But then when you get into the thumb curl function, in the hand controller, you'll try to curl it, and that thumb breaks sideways. It does some weird stuff. So this means that our rotation is not quite right. So to fix this, we can go back over here and uh, toggle our skeleton and take a look at our thumb joints. And so because we saw that the curl went this way, we know that it rotates on the Y axis and we want the Y axis to line up in a way so that the thumb will curl in this way like we would expect a thumb to. So I'm going to grab that joint and I'm just going to rotate this whole thing. Line it up. Like so. You may need to make individual adjustments to all these different joints. And once you think it looks good, go ahead and hit Rebuild Advanced Skeleton. And give that thumb curl a go. And there you go. The thumb is now curling properly. I've gone ahead and added the slider joints to my hips and my knees as well. Just because it's getting me a very nice deformation really quickly. I think I'll try it on the ankles as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything on like before. Create it in all these places, mirror it over, and select all my geometry, copy weights. All right, turning off. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that.
Oops. I think I'll even do the same with the wrists as well. All right. And yes, that's much better. That's very nice. I feel that this part of the bracer may still need some weight painting. But overall, it's pretty good. Ah, now the shoulders. Not surprising that this is a problem area down here. I will. I'll add. I'll add slider joints and see what happens, but I do not suspect that this will fix our problems with the shoulder. This might be a much more manual solution. Bring it over. Copy weights. All right. Yeah, let's see. Oh. Yeah, not only was that not helpful, it actually made our situation worse with the shoulder. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the shoulder is not the place that I want these slider joints. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. Mirror that over. Copy all these. Delete. Oh. Copy weights. And with that, our character is skinned and ready for refinement. In the next video, we will talk about weight painting and finishing up the body. But until then, have a good one.